Hey guys, this is Fabio Gallo speaking. Uh, I know that it has been past few months uh, since last videos. Uh, was very very busy in new businesses, but I wanna I wanna start back this year with a lot of content and a lot of interesting stuff. And I wanna start with something that I really like. So, um, and the question for today's video is: Will Netflix still dominate the streaming war in 2021? Uh, First of all, for who is not coming from this industry, streaming war is a very bad word today. Streaming war basically means is the tension war. So all the big companies like Netflix, Google, Amazon, and Facebook, and many, many other media outlet and media entertainment companies and social media companies are focusing on getting and, and, and winning user attention. So user attention is really the most important thing that brands today care in order to grow their business, in order to scale to the next level. So let's start from what numbers say so far in terms of Netflix, what, how Netflix is doing. Just yesterday night uh, in the new earning calls, uh, we understand how the COVID-19 is impacting positively this kind of media, media brands, media entertainment, and make users stay more at home clearly and spending more time at home and they increase the consumption of the video. But let's make a step back and look at the 2020. So in the 2020, I see three big things for Netflix. So. Netflix has the highest number of worldwide subscribers, more than 200 million subscribers that pay a monthly fee from 6 to 7 up to 15 uh, US dollars per month. So it's a quite huge number. It's the biggest actually number that you can find for an OTT video service like, uh, like Netflix. Um, it's, it's not the last point I would like to make here. So the second point is they have the lowest or one of the lowest average revenue per users. This is a very key factor, guys. Uh, when we look at the numbers, we don't have to look at just the number of subscribers, but we need to do, go deeper. And this is about this video. So why Netflix is still dominating or will dominate in 2021, we need to make numbers and understand what numbers means. So uh, one of the key uh, success factor for any video or streaming services is to understand how much in terms of ARPU you're doing and you are performing. So the ARPU for Netflix is 10.40. So a little bit more than $10 per user. It's quite good, but it's still a lot of room of improvement, specific if you look internationally uh, versus domestically. And we will come to this point in a moment. And by the way, when I say domestically, I say US market. The third point that is still more important is about churn and how the churn is impacting the revenue of any biggest media market there. So having a lower churn is really impacting your PL. And indeed, it's one of the key factors that media market and media outlets uh, want to, to battle and fight for. If you look, for instance, the entertainment side, if you look at the sport business, the, 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 the churn is extremely different. Sport business can up to 50, 60% of user churn, while media entertainment, the average is about 25%. So if you have a very low churn, like a Netflix does, that has 3% low uh, churn, that is massive, massive uh, important. If you compare to Disney, for instance, it has 6% of churn, is basically uh, the double of what Netflix does. Now, let's look at a number for, for a second. Accumulate number of subscribers 2018, 2019, and 2020. And you see how this grow uh, quite organically, I'll say. So uh, quite uh, similar, I would say. The growth is quite organically, I would say. So they reach more than 200 million subscribers now. But if you go back to 2019, they arrived to 165 and 2018 and 159. How the Netflix revenue growth rate is going? So clearly COVID has impacted very hugely, but again, without COVID in a pre-COVID world, if you look at Q4 2019, you see that the growth rate was 31%. So 
The growth rate indeed has been uh, impacted and influenced by the COVID, and, and the growth rate specifically during Q1 uh, 2021 and, and Q4 2020 uh, it has been hugely impacted by that, but it's not the only, uh, the only reason. The, the real reason is because Netflix is investing tons of billions of dollars on content. And if you look at what I wrote here, in 2020, they are expected to spend more than $17 billion. It's not confirmed, by the way, this, this amount. So this is why it is written as expected. Now, what are the top five uh, subscription video on demand platforms in the US according to this graph that I found for Q2 2020? Well, it's quite clear. Netflix is, is the dominant platform even in the domestic market, which is clearly the most competitive one. If you look at uh, uh, the rest of the world, the US clearly is the most competitive market in terms of uh, OTT platforms. And Netflix has more or less the 31% of market share, then Amazon, Amazon Prime Video, 24% market share, Hulu with 18%, and then Disney that just started uh, approximately a year ago with a 60%. But Disney, to be totally frank with you guys, has the highest performance, the highest growth rate. The streaming war is, is increasing. So the war is getting is getting uh, bigger uh, and the reason is that new players almost every week or every month new big player are entering to the, this business so if you follow me you see that i'm posting on my linkedin profile uh, a lot of updates about it and it's true if you see it really how disney hulu uh, discovery plus and uh, hulu uh, they are performing and they're getting up uh, uh, basically the market is is really heating up um, so the only way to to fight uh, this war is basically to start to create your own original content to invest in your ip to create your brand to make sure that user uh, understand what you're creating, understand the, the, the content that you're doing and make it relevant, make it relevant for users. Before I spoke about the domestic rate compared to the international rate, and you can see from here that uh, the, the chart is very clear. So the real growth, the real growth rate of Netflix in the last few years, in the last few months, has been due, has been drive by the international expansion. So if you look again at the numbers, you can see that in uh, Q2 2018, for instance, was the first reporting period where international sales, you know, topped the domestic figures with 49.2% and 48.4% respectively. So since basically early 2018, the domestic and international growth was started to be pretty much the same and from that moment on the international clearly uh, growth a higher compared to the domestic growth this is quite interesting because if you look uh, if you look for instance to other kind of market which we'll talk in a moment in which Netflix and other uh, are looking to like Asia for instance that represent a huge level um, of financement of the brand in the next few years. So we talk about how many uh, users have been created, uh, what was the, the, the churn, uh, you know, uh, what was the hit, uh, what was the ARPU, but what about the cost of running this platform and the cost of running Netflix in particular? So clearly the, the biggest cost, as you can see from this chart, uh, are being related to content spend and marketing. So those two are the biggest factors that clearly uh, impact the profit and loss of any uh, OTT business, but specifically for Netflix, because uh, like, like Disney, they are owning the AP and they are investing uh, mostly in, in uh, original content. So the, the difference that you can find really uh, are two big differences between domestic and international. The first thing, uh, we talked about the average revenue per user before. So the ARPU, if you look at the ARPU in US, uh, it is about $15. If you compare to the rest of the board, 
and you make an average is between eight to nine US dollars. So actually, the average revenue per user globally is a little bit above, as I mentioned earlier, and in the earlier stage of the video, it is about ten dollars. But if you look again, the as the ARPU internationally is lower, clearly you need to have a higher number of subscribers in order to compensate the revenues coming from uh, the domestic market. At the same token, uh, your general cost for creating, uh, you know, uh, content and and the marketing that you have to spend in order to penetrate in those territory is is quite huge. It's quite huge because you need to basically market your platforms in those markets. You need to make uh, alliances, strategic deals in order to penetrate and have a better distribution channels. So this is quite important to understand why Netflix is investing more internationally for sure because the, the growth rate is higher but the same token the uh, the cost the general expenses the content expenses and the marketing expenses are much higher internationally even if the ARPU is lower compared to the domestic so the big question for today and I want to finish this video is what's next where Netflix is going and and what are the let's say three main pillars which they are uh, thinking about. First, Asia. So we saw that the, the growth is impacted positively by the, the growth in the Asian market. If you look at the Asian market, India is the, 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 the real uh, heart of the growth. So India is where really any kind of OTT businesses are focusing their attention because it's where uh, the, the biggest number of subscribers are. Uh, there is huge uh, number of people living there, and 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 there is, the, and, there, and the users are very hungry of new content. They are demanding new content, they're demanding original content, and demanding local content. And Asia and India are the markets in which, in the, probably in the first, in the next two three years, we'll see the, the highest growth rate. Second is about a, a new type of content. So far, we we uh, we saw that most of this kind of company were investing mainly on original content, original script content, and now we are seeing a shift with unscript content. Uh, we we see more animation uh, and content animation product production, and we see that they are also trying to test in some countries like France uh, a 24 7 linear channels and the last point is about creating a new distribution channel I always say in my video that content is king but distribution is queen so how you can distribute it better how you can make your brand uh, more visible so that pass through a different uh, a different agreement that Netflix is doing with, for instance, telco companies or a strategic alliance with other media market uh, outlets uh, that are specifically in some specific countries. So this kind of distribution, new channels, new kind of type of content and a focus on Asia and India will impact very positively uh, the, the growth on Netflix in the next few years. So guys, I hope uh, this video show you a little bit what uh, Netflix is doing behind behind the world and behind what uh, they they are explaining you. Uh, I hope you find it this video helpful. So if you find this video helpful, please thumbs up, like the video, and subscribe to my channel and click the bell so you will be advised. You will be notified anytime that I will upload a new video. Cheers.